بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us first have the proper intention in our hearts to attend the lesson for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our lesson for tonight is about Surah Al-Duha. Surah Al-Duha was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was in Mecca and it's comprised of 11 ayahs. The interpreters of the Quran agreed that this surah was revealed after the revelation had stopped for a while. Al-Bukhari narrated in his Sahih from the root of Jundub ibn Sufyan that he said that the Messenger of Allah suffered an illness. By the time he stayed in for two or three nights, a woman came to and said, O Muhammad, I hope your devil has left you for I have not seen him near you for two or three nights. So Allah revealed the first three ayahs of Surah Al-Duha. The woman in the narration was Umm Jamil, the daughter of Harb and the wife of Abu Lahab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatened them with a severe torture in hellfire on the day of judgment. تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب ومرأته حمالة الحطب. She used to gather the wood sticks and throw them on the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Allah threatened her with a severe torture. Allah said في جيدها she will be she will have a rope made of fire in hell fire wrapped around her neck on the day of judgment so she's the one who said to the prophet after the revelation stopped for a while the prophet felt ill about this then she came to him and she said I hope your devil has left you then Allah revealed this surah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It says, وَالضُّحَى That means, I Allah swear by the morning light. That's al-duha, the light of the sun in the morning. That's al-duha. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى and by the night when it settles in darkness. So that's a swear by the night when it settles in. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by the morning light and by the night when it settles in darkness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not abandoned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nor hated him. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ Meaning, O Muhammad, your Lord has not abandoned you. وَمَا قَلَى Nor hated you. This means that for the Prophet not to receive the revelation for a while, that doesn't mean that now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left his support. No. 
It doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left him. No. It doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it means here that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that was for a reason. The, that period of time when the Prophet was not receiving the revelation, that was for a wisdom. So not as that lady said that uh, your devil has left you or your Lord has left you and hated you. That what she said. So that is to refute what she claimed. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And verily the hereafter is better for you than the first. The first is the life in this world. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the greatest endowments in paradise. He will be in the highest rank. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى And your Lord shall give you so that you shall be pleased. From the rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. أَلَمْ يَجِدِكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى So here, it's a reminder to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and counting the endowments of Allah upon him. And that is to comfort him and make him not to worry. أَلَمْ يَجِدِكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى Did he not know about you becoming an orphan? When he was young, even before he was born, and give you shelter. Now the shelter is here by being fostered by his uncle Abu Talib. The Prophet ﷺ was born as an orphan because his father died while the mother of the Prophet was still pregnant with the Prophet ﷺ about six months. So he was born as an orphan. But what happened? The Prophet wasn't left without any support. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him shelter by being uh, fostered by his uncle Abu Talib. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى Meaning, and Allah knew that you had no knowledge of the Qur'an and the detailed rules. Although, the Prophet ﷺ had the proper conviction, proper belief in the Creator. Before he received the revelation, before the Prophet received the revelation, he used to go to the cave of Hira and stay there for a while worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, pondering about the creations of Allah and praising His Lord. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created guidance in the heart of the Prophet even before receiving the revelation. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as all the Prophets, never worshipped other than Allah. The Prophets, even before prophethood, they do not commit blasphemy. They do not worship other than Allah. They worship Allah alone. So the Prophet didn't worship an idol. Didn't worship other than Allah. He was guided. Allah created guidance in his heart. So he was guided. As Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim didn't worship the idols with his father and his mother. Rather, he used to say to his father, how can you worship something that doesn't bring you any benefit and doesn't affect you with any harm? Meaning, if you worship it, it doesn't create a benefit to you. And if you don't worship it, it doesn't harm you. And they make it. He said to them, أَتَعْبُدُونَ مَا تَنْحِتُونَ 
Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'malun. You worship what you engrave by your own hands and Allah is the one who created you and created your deeds. So they sculpture these idols and they worship them. So they worship what they make. So Prophet Ibrahim السلام, told them that these idols do not deserve to be worshipped. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the best of all the creations, was guided to the correct belief. So he had the true belief about the Creator before he received the revelation. Meaning, the Prophet was aware of the fact that this world has a Creator, the Creator does not resemble the creations, he knows about all that. But, he wasn't aware of the Qur'an and the detailed rules as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an about him مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ meaning you didn't know the Qur'an or the detailed matters of the belief about the hereafter in details before receiving the revelation he didn't know about them after he started receiving the revelation he gained that knowledge so he memorized the whole Quran without forgetting one letter of it although he was illiterate the Prophet وسلم, and that was for a reason and as well he learned about other matters of the religion so the ayah وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى it doesn't mean that the Prophet was misguided then became guided, no the ayah وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا meaning Allah knew that you don't have the knowledge about the Qur'an and the details of the rules of the religion and Allah guided you to that knowledge meaning Allah gave you that knowledge now some scholars said وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى They said when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was young, young child he got lost in the ramifications of Mecca some of the narrow roads in Mecca he lost his way and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala facilitated for him the return to his grandfather some said that but we say the Prophet وسلم, didn't have the knowledge of the Quran before he received the revelation and didn't have the knowledge about the details of the rules of the religion before receiving the revelation and Allah gave him that knowledge and Allah knew that you were in need and Allah gave you your sufficiency. The Prophet ﷺ never begged. The Prophet ﷺ never asked for money of any person. He was given his sufficiency. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقُهَرُ Now, these words, although they're addressing the Prophet وسلم, but that's to teach the nation how they should deal with the orphan. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقُهَرُ Meaning, hence, do not oppress the orphan. We have to take care of the orphan. There is a great reward for the one who looks after an orphan, gives him sympathy, support, compassion, to an extent that the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who strokes an orphan's head with sympathy for the sake of Allah alone shall have rewards for every hair over which his hand passed. 
how many hair will you know be covered by one's hand just if you place your hand on the head of the orphan out of sympathy for the sake of Allah to make him feel comfortable tranquil with peace that you are with him so with that if you do it with good intention you'll receive rewards by the number of the hair that your hand will pass over so فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَى وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَى No repulse the one who asks. So the one who comes to you asking for something, give him. Or otherwise, do not scold and repulse him. Do not be tough on him when rejecting his request. So if someone comes to you asking for money, let us say, if you don't want to give him money, do not be tough on him. So it's either you help him, you give him, or you might apologize in a very nice way. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ As for the endowment of your Lord, speak about it. Speak about it. When you talk about the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jal, and you recognize them, you are in fact thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for these endowments. So you say, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me such and such. So when you talk about these endowments, you are thanking Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala for giving you all these endowments. So this surah was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the revelation stopped for a while and that when the non-believers came to the Prophet and they asked him about the time of the hour the day of judgment when it's gonna happen and they asked him about a ruh the soul the Prophet وسلم, rushed and said to them I'll tell you tomorrow he was expecting to receive revelation about this. But because no one knows about the exact time of the happening of the hour, and no one knows about in detail about the soul, and because the Prophet وسلم, said, I'll tell you tomorrow, he was relying on receiving revelation and he forgot to say, insha'Allah, the revelation stopped for a while. To an extent that the Prophet felt ill about this. He was very sick and tired and he stayed in for two or three days. So he was very upset about this and depressed. That when this lady, Umm Jamil, the daughter of Harb, said to the Prophet, I can see that your devil has left you and hated you. Then this surah came after this, comforting the Prophet وسلم, giving him tranquility, and it starts as saja ma rabbuka wa ma qala. So Allah swore by the morning light, Meaning after this duration of time, when the Prophet wasn't receiving the revelation for him, it was like darkness. What comes after darkness? The light of the morning. So Allah swore by the light of the morning and by the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not abandon him as they claim and that was a something for the Prophet to learn Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so the this surah is of a great importance it talks about how the situation it gives us an idea about the situation in Mecca at that time and 
how people used to deal with one another. The orphan was oppressed. The one who is poor, whenever he goes to someone who is rich to ask him for money, for help, they would reject them in a very tough way. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught this nation how to deal with such disadvantaged people. Because if you are fortunate and someone who is unfortunate in this life comes to you for help, if you can offer him help, give it. And think if the situation, and that is possible, was vice versa. The other way around. You were the one disadvantaged and he's the one fortunate. How would you like him to treat you? In what way? These are some of the teachings of Islam that we learn. And Alhamdulillah for guiding us to these beautiful teachings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our end as righteous Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We say la ilaha illallah three times.